So Boston Scientific just released their new robot Spot. Now you might have heard about this last year, but it finally came out for commercial use and you can buy it for a cool 75k. In case you don't know, it's a four-legged robot that can go across rough terrain, be programmed in Python and has endless applications really. It can know it's been shown to open doors and communicate with other robots. It's a really cool new robot. With it going on the open market, it'll be interesting to see what some programmers can do with it. So far, we've seen its application being used for mostly surveying, going into hazardous areas. But I think there's a lot more potential for the robot if they can design some AI that can help na help it navigate through terrain. Um, I'll be curious to see what happens. Let me know if you can think of any possible uses for this robot and if you'll be buying one yourself. Super resolution. Shanghai Jiao Tong University, I hope I'm saying that right, in cooperation with Microsoft, have released a new API that will take your low resolution image and up it to super resolution. Now this is very cool and uh, there's a paper here going along with it and you can see from the image that it does a pretty good job. Now I'm sure there's other APIs out there that can do this but uh, this is kind of a step forward. And in recently in digital photography, it's interesting to see how software has become the main change and how it's all done rather than better megapixels or, you know, better lenses. Now you can use consumer smartphones to do some amazing photography. So the new PlayStation and Xbox have been announced and their specs have been released. Now they're both very similar. I think the PlayStation has variable clock speed. That's the biggest difference. But what's very interesting is that they both have SSD drive. This is a, the biggest leap forward from the last generation. It'll be interesting to see how they use that to push games. The only concern I have is that a lot of games nowadays are designed for console first and then ported to the PC. So I'm just wondering if they're utilizing the SSD on a console and then they try to port that over to the PC. If people are using HDD drives, is that going to cause an issue, I wonder, in the future for compatibility? I really hope not, but we'll see what happens. Personally though, I'll be sticking with my PC no matter what. So VTime announced they're creating a private version of their social VR platform, VTime XR. And they're designing it to help vulnerable children and families. And I find this very interesting and an area of a lot of consideration because basically what it'll do is help vulnerable children keep in contact with social workers and maybe their family and things like this. And outside of what VTime are doing, I think VR has large potential for therapy and psychological help for a lot of people because it offers a layer of abstraction that the real world just doesn't offer and gives a safe environment that they use controls. I think having that extra layer of abstraction just makes it easier for someone to express themselves. Almost like programming. So Ubuntu are delaying their recent update for 20.04. 20.04 just released in April. I have to say I got it myself and I find it fantastic to use. Now I did have some upgrading issues from 19 to 20 um, but that's expected with most Ubuntu upgrades. But besides this I found this interesting website from Vitor Holen and it basically it counts the amount of swear words in the Linux kernel. <laughs> it's this interesting graph that gives a lot of details of what goes into the Linux kernels and you can see there was like a peak swearing at 2005 but recently it dropped off a lot and I wondered what happened there. Maybe the people maintaining code have decided to tidy up a bit. So a new programming language was released called Silk. That's S-I-L-Q. It's a quantum computer programming language and it offers a higher level of, of abstraction than most other quantum computing languages. Now there's a lot of things you can't do in a regular language that quantum computing languages allow you to do with quantum computers. And it seems from what I've read that we're getting closer and closer to real world applications and use for these languages and computers. You can already download it and try it out for yourself and see what you think. Although it'd be hard to find any application unless you have a quantum computer handy. But it would be cool to see what actually comes of all this in the next few years because it's a growing area of research and it seems very niche at the moment but We'll see what happens. That's all the news for this week. If you want to follow my channel, I do a lot of Rust and programming languages. Stay tuned.